Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. It's a mesh core video today and lots has been going on in the mesh core world. As usual, it's just so fast the development on this. And what I wanna to talk to you today is about mesh core on ESP now. So in the last video I made about mesh core, we were talking about how you can use mesh core over ESP now. What that basically means is you can use the 2.4 gigahertz radios that are built into the ESP32 um, chips to actually run mesh core and run a mesh using just minimal hardware. So so by minimal hardware, I mean stuff like this, just tiny little boards that cost like less than a pound from like AliExpress. So we've got two little examples here. This one is an ESP32 C3 um, from Seed Studio. And this one actually has an external antenna port on as well. So that's for the 2.4 gig radio. So we can use that for mesh core. Also this device here, which is a wave share board and it has a built-in antenna. So no external antenna, but it has a built-in antenna on the top here. I mean, again, this was like about seven quid. I think this one, you know, you can pick up from China for like pennies probably. Obviously the stuff like the Heltex work, these are like ESP32. So you can run mesh core ESP now on these devices. This is quite a cool case. I'll leave the link and stuff in the description to this. But this is basically a fully functioning mesh core companion. It works over USB, so you can plug it into the computer and you can even use Liam's app on the computer. That's what I'll show you now. So if we open up a Chrome web browser and go to meshcore.co.uk, up the top here, click on apps and then come down to web client here you'll basically see exactly the same as what you would on a mobile device running MeshCore, and that is the full app experience. So this device here is actually connected by USB, not Bluetooth. But to get into the USB feature, you can actually just hit this connect um, button here, then hit cancel, then click on these three little dots up here, connect via USB, and you select the USB serial port that it's on, connect, and there we go. This is a MeshCore ESP32 running on 2.4 gig, and you can see all of the contacts from my main mesh. And that's what we're gonna come on to next. How have we managed to integrate this onto the lower mesh? So this device here is what I'm calling a mesh core hyperbridge. What this basically is, is a translator between ESP now and lower, and it works both ways as well. So you can see here, we've got our lower T deck, which is on the mesh. Here's a bunch of messages and emojis and stuff people have been sending. So if I type in test on here, what we should see is the message briefly appear on this one because we are connected to the computer so it will clear that message off. But when we go over to our app and we go to the public channel, you see we've got a new message here and we can see here Andy T deck test. We can also send one back so we can go hi Andy from here and hit enter and we'll see from 1060 which is this device here we have got a two-way communication going. One of them's on ESP now and the other one's on LoRa. Pretty cool, huh? So we can even take like other standalone devices like this one here, the little pager. So this device hasn't got LoRa. This only has a 2.4 gig radio, but this can just participate in the mesh exactly the same as any other LoRa device because we're using the hyperbridge in the middle. So why would you want to do this? Obviously ESP now being 2.4 gig, it has a lot less range than LoRa. So why not basically just use LoRa all the way? Well, the problem is if you're using a LoRa node like this to actually connect to your LoRa repeater, which might be outside or in your loft, then it creates a bit of a problem because your companion radio here on the desk can't actually hear what's going on outside at your big antenna in the loft or outdoors. So there is a potential for a packet collision to happen between this and your repeater outside. This will effectively block any packets that are coming in from the repeater and therefore this one actually received that packet. That is a genuine thing that could happen. So by using the bridge, you eliminate that problem completely because these are operating on two different frequencies. So this has no way of blocking what's coming in from the outside world. So this system opens up a lot of possibilities for MeshCore. Right now, this is just a simple translator or a simple bridge, but we're actually gonna release a proper gateway firmware for a device like this. So it would be possible to actually segregate which devices you want to actually go across to the lower mesh as well. So potentially you could have lots of sensors around and they don't actually cause congestion on the lower mesh because you'd be able to control which devices can actually go out to the wider mesh. So if you're just interested in getting some telemetry from a certain area, it needn't flood the entire mesh like the other system does. Now, if you're still watching and I haven't confused the absolute hell out of you, there is one other really good use for this, and that is bridging repeaters with different lower settings. So you could have one on spreading factor 11, you could have one on spreading factor 10, they link together by the ESP bridge, and 
they will just work as if they're one. So during my testing with MeshCore over ESP now, I've found the speed to be pretty fast. So for example, if we look at a 10 hop trace, it takes about 49 milliseconds. Compare that to lower. So if we just trace my lower base station, you can see 357 milliseconds just for one hop. So you can see, if you wanted to have a massive mesh, you could totally do this with ESP now. And I think it would probably cope with 100 repeaters or each one of these devices retransmitting, no problem at all. And that's quite an interesting concept, I think, because if you start having lots of ESP now mesh core repeaters in really good locations, you could probably cover a really large area. And that's something I've been testing. So on my mast, I've put up a 2.4 gig Yagi. This is the one at the bottom. And I've got my little pager here as well. So what I'm going to do is send messages to 1060, which is the, the companion radio that's plugged into the computer. Now, because the antenna on this is pretty small and it's inside here, I'm actually going to take an ESP now repeater with me as well. So this is just a simple repeater, 2.4 gig antenna on the top. And what I reckon I'll end up doing is dropping this on route somewhere, maybe just leave it on a wall or something like that, just to help the range a bit. So I'm just at the end of my front path. So I'm just written a message there, end of path. And then we'll get that one sent so that is going zero hops and it has sent there so that's gone direct obviously not using that repeater so let's go for a walk now about 50 meters away now so just get that sent and that's coming back with no go there you go so we are already using our repeater which is tucked under my arm i'd expect that this is going to be a stronger signal on the repeater right so i'm about 200 meters away from the mast i reckon at this point so i've dropped off the repeater here on the top of this brick wall just to help things out a bit and what i'll do i will actually reset the path on this one and just do it so that it finds the path so i'll just type in 200 let's send that and see see what happens right so 200 and we've got two hops so it's definitely going via this repeater on the wall right carry on walking now i will say this is not line of sight guys so for 2.4 gig going to a tiny little pcb antenna like this um this is what you kind of expect right so now i'm about 400 meters away let's just try that again and 400 has gone through as well and we're still two two hops right okay so i've actually jumped in the car to do this next one which is one kilometer away so let's just see if that goes through <laughs> holding out a lot of hope for that um let's try a flood and see what happens <laughs> one kilometer that's pretty madness for 2.4 gig this is where the repeater is right i'm now about 1.9 kilometers away and just add one go through so you get the idea guys this is just pretty bonkers for 2.4 gig really so those tests seem to work pretty well as usual with this stuff it's all about line of sight antenna placement and especially at 2.4 gig it really is line of sight but it's really cool to know that we could potentially have lots of these devices in a small area and we could actually create a mesh on a hyper local kind of scale and not even use lower so that's quite an interesting one especially given the speed this performs it's been measured at about 0.2 megabits per second on this long range mode that we're using on esp now so yeah obviously on that little 10 hop demo that i did earlier you can see the kind of throughput you get and how little time it takes to just rattle across 10 repeaters it is really quite impressive i will be looking at lower on 2.4 gig as well because that's quite interesting but again it means you need an extra radio and these things have got the radios built in the repeater on the yagi that i showed you is actually running on one of these that tiny little board with just that little ufl connector and all i've done is just put a pigtail on and connected the um the yagi up so it's just madness that a little board like that can send a signal that far so that's about it for this one. If you're interested in trying this, there's source code available on the GitHub for companion radio, repeater, and even room server as well. So you can try this with different boards, but you will have to modify it to suit different boards. There's no ready to go pre-built binaries for this at this stage, and the gateway or the bridge is not available yet as well. That's still being kind of worked on and still being refined. So this is very much a development experiment thing. Um, if you're interested in this, then yeah, show your support on the Discord and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.